Okay. So I'm going to introduce um, Dr. Nahit Kumar. He is um, fellowship trained in child and adolescent psychiatry as well as addiction psychiatry. And he is currently the fellowship uh, program director for child and adolescent psychiatry um, at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, where I actually did my training. So we know each other pretty well. Um, and Nahit, without further ado, I will let you get started. Right, well, thank you, Allison, and uh, welcome everybody. I was just telling Ben and uh, someone else that um, I just I just appreciate what you guys are doing um, during this COVID crisis. So thank you so much. All right, so we are we are going to talk about motivational interviewing, but before we actually get into the meat of that, uh, let's kind of go over some of the technological housekeeping stuff. So if you are not talking. I would appreciate if you can mute yourself um, so that there's no interference uh, with so many people on the call. It can get really um, hummingbird-like, um, so we don't want that. And um, you know, once once we are talking, we can have one of you unmute yourself, talk, and then mute yourself back again. Okay. We are going to be doing screen sharing, and that's how you will sc see my screens. So if you know how to um, discontinue your video, like stop your video for a while while we are screen sharing, you can do that, but you can leave your video on otherwise. That's fine, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start my screen share. And that's those are my slides, okay. Well, so as Allison said, I'm an assistant professor at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences and the fellowship program director for child psychiatry. And today I was uh, you know, very honored and excited to be invited to talk about using motivational interviewing skills to enhance crisis counseling or support counseling, right? And how can, how can we use some of the motivational interviewing skills to do this? Okay, these are some of the objectives. So we learned the basic principles of MI. And again, some of you here might be more than, you know, an expert in motivational interviewing. So this might be a good refresher on some of the skills. We will we'll have a chance to practice some foundational motivational interviewing skills and then practice how to apply these skills in, in crisis or counseling situations. And, you know, and this is, you know, when I do motivational interviewing trainings or didactics, you know, it, it ends up being a lot more interactive because that's how you learn these skills, right? Uh, you know, doing a didactic on motivational interviewing just doesn't make sense. Uh, so we'll do a lot of interaction today and kind of participant feedback um, while using technology, of course. So it would be best if you are on your laptops. If not, that's okay too. But it'd be great if you're using your laptops because we would also be using our cell phones um, for some of the interaction components. So if you can have your cell phone on the side and laptop on the center, that would be ideal setting for you. Okay. All right, so the way we are going to do uh, the interactive feedback component of this is we are going to use poll everywhere, okay? So I would like you to focus on the text option right now. If you have your cell phones with you, go to your message, start a new message or compose a new message. And in the, in the top where you type in the person's name or their phone number, right? Just type 37, 607 and in this in the in the bottom of the message where you actually type the message right whatever you want to send to them you type nihit kumar n-i-h-i-t k-u-m-a-r 316 and then send the message i'll give you a few seconds to do that now when you do that successfully you'll actually get a reply back to your message saying you have joined my session. It wouldn't give you a reply if you mistyped the, the spelling or the phone number. So make sure it's the correct spelling or phone number. Okay, moving along. Hey, Dr. Kumar. Yes. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt a little bit. You know. Uh, you know, 
I just want to let the audience know that uh, this is just for our uh, course purpose. You know, it will not uh, collect the, well, collect that data for an anonymous vote just for this course purpose and not for anything else. Yeah, thanks. Sure, yeah. Uh, also, Thank Nick, you. that slide or that info, can you post it in chat so that people who are just joining may also be able to see it? Okay, I can probably do that. Um, could, uh, could one of you write, it's hard for me to unshare my screen. Post I'll it. do that, I'll, I'll do that, don't worry. Just give me one moment. Okay. Poll.eve.com, enter, okay. Yeah, that's the good. text one works much better because you can use your phone to text and type in the responses. 37607, okay. Thank you. Text Nihit Kumar. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. It's the entire thing. Okay, three one six two three seven six zero seven two. Join him. What to join the speaker? All right, done. Okay, perfect. So now that we got the technology out of the way, let's start to focus on the content. All right. So at its very basic, uh, motivational interviewing is a style of therapy, right? Uh, it borrows from a lot of different therapy styles, so it's not unique. Some of these skills and the, 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 the components of MI is not just unique to MI. You know, it is shared by a variety of uh, different uh, therapeutic, psychotherapeutic skills. Uh, but it's just that the uniqueness of MI is, is in the way it's packaged and delivered, okay? So it's a very collaborative, goal-oriented style of communication. And we say, you know, we, we sometimes kind of blur this line between communication and therapy, right? Um, the, the important thing is we pay a particular attention to the language of change. And in MI terms, we call that change talk, okay? And so what that means is the goal for using MI is to help patients or clients move in a certain direction of change, okay? Now we know that change is difficult, and if change were easy, people would have done it themselves, right? And so you can act as their guide to help present the information to them so they can make their own decision, right? So this is designed to strengthen personal motivation for and commitment to a specific goal by eliciting and exploring their the person's own reasons, right? Their client's own reasons for change within an atmosphere of acceptance and compassion, okay? So there's a lot of collaborative component to MI. Now, how would you use MI in crisis counseling, right? Well, behavior change may not be a goal in crisis counseling. You might just be there to help support the person, the physician that you're talking to, right? Um, so, so that's the reason why we're not gonna go deeper into all of the aspects of MI. And when I was preparing this talk, I was, talk, I was thinking about how would MI best be suited for crisis counseling, right? So again, remember what's the goal of your role is when you're volunteering for these phone calls, right? Someone's in a crisis, another physician is in a crisis, something may be going on. How can you use MI skills in there, okay? Well, there are certain skills that we'll talk about which can really help establish and strengthen that rapport even on the phone, okay? So even when you're talking to the physician for a few minutes, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it is, these skills can really help you establish and strengthen that relationship, okay? On their side, you know, when you use MI correctly, they feel heard and validated, okay? And at the end of it, the goal is it, it creates a sort of hope, creates a feeling that they can do this, they can get through it, right? And, and in my mind, that's what counseling is about, especially crisis counseling, okay? All right, oh, let's let this start moving, okay. Oh, there it is, okay. So when you look at the core components of MI, MI is built on a foundation of MI spirit, okay? And you ask, what is spirit? And again, some of you who might know about MI have had other lectures or experiences might know what this is about, right? But MI spirit comes from a place of partnership and the idea that I am not the expert in the other person. They are, okay? And 
to enhance and leverage that relationship, you know, that, that togetherness, that, that partnership into helping explore their own motivations for change so that they can come up with the solutions of what to do and how to get through this, okay? And we'll spend a little bit of time talking about what the spirit is and, and doing some exercises around that, right? So MI spirit is really, really important. If you, you know, even if you do the skills that we'll talk about um, and you don't have that spirit, you're not really kind of doing MI, right? So spirit really is the foundation of what we do in MI. Moving on to then, we, we go to the core skills of MI. So the skills is built upon this uh, pyramid. And uh, we will also get a chance to practice at least some of the skills, if not all, uh, during this session today. And then finally, once you've got that down, you know, there are certain strategies, uh, the directional component comes into play. Uh, you kind of start to figure out how to respond to a certain situation when, when patients or physicians or whoever else you're talking to is kind of a little resistant, uh, you know, to, to the change and they're, they're using strategies that brings them in the opposite direction how to handle those things, right? And so those are the strategies. So we, we will not spend a whole lot of time talking about strategies today. We'll focus more on the MI spirit and some of the skills. Okay, all right. So going into depth on the spirit, right? We have a lot of acronyms in MI and one of those acronyms is PACE. So it stands for Partnership, Acceptance, Compassion, and Evocation, right? So what is partnership? Think about a patient, uh, well, in, in, in this case, actually, you, you have physicians that, you're, you're, you know, that, that are calling you. you know, there may be physicians in different specialties or across the country, and it's a little easier to form that partnership because you're both on the same level, right? With, with patients, you, know, you really have to think about this partnership. The partnership is really an alliance that honors the patient's expertise and perspective. When I'm doing a MI, I say, well, you know, I may be the expert in the diagnosis or the medications, but I am not an expert in you, right? Maybe this is the first time I'm talking to you and I don't know anything about you. So you're the expert in yourself. You have to help me understand what's going on. Um, and when you do that, you form that partnership, you bring everyone on the same page. Uh, and so the other person starts to also feel like they have a role in what they're doing, okay? Acceptance is another of those spirits. Um, and acceptance is all about trusting the absolute worth of the person that you're talking to, right? In our role as physicians, a lot of times we move into, you know, I know what's best for you and the decisions you might be making might not be the, in your best interest, right? So that's the opposite of acceptance. Acceptance is trusting the individual's decision, right? Just trusting the decision-making process, trusting their motivations, trusting that they know what's best for them and being okay with that, okay? Compassion, um, you know, I don't have to tell you all, you're all physicians and you're psychiatrists on top of that. You know, compassion just comes with our profession most of the time and you know, this is really actively promoting the welfare of others. Um, you're always looking out for the best interests of your patients or colleagues, right? And if you come from a stance of compassion that, that really kind of, you know, it shows a genuine warmth um, and, and strength and, and your own motivations for helping this other person. And finally, evocation. Evocation is a component. It's, it uses some skills to elicit the other person's motivation to change, right? And so the idea within the MI spirit is these motivations reside within the other person, not with you. So if someone is not taking their medications correctly or not following the guidelines, the treatment plan, if I tell them they should be doing this or this is how they should solve the problem, well, that, that is the, the resources are not coming from them, it's coming from me, right? And that might not apply to the other person. And that's what evocation is, is to try to get as much as possible to have the other person talk about what might work for them and what might not. All right, so we just finished talking about the favorite, uh, we're just talking about the MI spirit. So we are going to do an exercise to kind of solidify uh, what, what this spirit kind of feels like, okay? And there's a lot of different kinds of exercises, but this is, this is one of my favorites, it's kind of called the favorite mentor exercise. So when I was uh, growing up, um, I had an uncle who, who really kind of believed in me, right? 
Uh, he was a professor of organic chemistry and um, you know, that wasn't my strength. Uh, but even then he kind of really believed in me and, and thought I could do well. So going through um, you know, high school and college, he would have expectations for me. He would really praise me uh, when I did well, even when I put in the hard work, even if I did, didn't get the results he wanted. Um, and, and he would have the genuine warmth um, and interest in what I was trying to achieve, right? So you are all successful people, right? There may be a person in your lives or maybe a combination of people, if you're lucky enough, who, who may have acted in that role. It may be a teacher, a high school coach, you know, your professor in med school, um, you know, it could be your parent, you know, really anyone, okay? So take a minute to think who that person is. Like, you know, you can write down their name, you don't have to share it. You can write down their name or kind of bring that image in, in your head and kind of think about that person for a second. Okay. And hopefully you, you have someone in mind. And the next step is think about what characteristics that person had that made them you know, come to mind, right? That made you write their name down. Why was that? Why was it that person and not some other person, right? What characteristics do you have? So the way we're gonna do this is when we move on to the next slide, bring out your cell phones, okay? You should have already logged into my session. So all you do is type in that person's characteristic, you know, warmth, genuine, whatever it is, and then hit send. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of good, good characteristics. So, so warm, kind, openness, demeanor, persistence, caring, teaching, wisdom, authenticity, honesty, knowledgeable. Oh, you guys are just amazing. Okay, great. Wow, this is just so enjoyable to see. All right, so, so great. So now think about yourself, right? Think about yourself in the role of a counselor. When you're talking to another physician, does some of this apply to you? And, and how can you leverage this, right? How can you leverage some of the qualities you have to be their mentor when they're in crisis? Okay. All right, so I am going to, for a second, unshare my screen and um, have a little debrief, you know, uh, about this exercise. And you guys can um, unmute yourself and kind of share how you felt going through this exercise and share what your thoughts are about being in that role of a counselor. So I would say that a professor in college, my physics professor, being patient, kind, and giving up his time um, are qualities that I want to embody when I talk to patients or um, in my profession or on the crisis line. Um, I was thinking about uh, a professor who taught uh, pathology and um, he would yell at me, but not, <laughs> not in a mean way, kind of like uh, teasing, but 
it was just he had this steadfast belief and if i didn't know something he was more like why don't you know it because i know you you're capable so and that meant the world to me even at times where i questioned my own abilities to have someone who believed in mine i, I was thinking of a uh, residency supervisor who he could recognize what my strengths were. I mean, he's obviously teaching me, but he worked from what I did well. And the thing that I think about if I think about being on a crisis call is helping someone remember what may have worked before for them. And that a lot of times in crisis, you forget what really worked when you were in crisis before. Sure. So thank you so much, for you guys, for sharing, sharing your thoughts and feelings, right? So, so this is really what my spirit is, just kind of being in this mode where you're, you're acting like, like a mentor to someone else who's in crisis, right? That's all MI spirit is all about. Right? And you can apply this to a variety of situations. In fact, MI has research evidence based on eating disorders and you know, medical disorders, chronic illnesses like diabetes and asthma and you know, with compliance. You know, it, of course, substance abuse is the one thing we use motivational interviewing all the time. So it could be a variety of situations you can use these, these skills and having this spirit, okay? Great, so I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen. Thank you all for participating so much. And let's move along, okay. So, okay, let me move this. All right, so, so these are the core MI skills, all right? And again, another acronym, it's called ORS plus I. And I was added in the later half, but um, ORS was the original skill and they stand for open-ended questions, affirmations, reflective listening, summaries, and information exchange. Now, of course, each of these could take an hour, so I'm not gonna spend so much time on that. What I am going to focus more on are the two skills of affirmations and reflective listening, because I felt like these are the two kind of skills that could really help enhance that rapport I was talking about, you know, on the phone call when you're in there. And so we'll, we'll get a little bit of this. Okay, so first starting with reflective listening. Now, again, as I said, reflective listening is not just an MI thing, okay? It's used in a variety of other situations, variety of other counseling techniques. Um, it's just with MI, you, you, you do it in a, in, a, in, a, in a particular way and you package it together with other skills uh, to make it MI. So some of the reflective listening skills, well, some of the reflections that you can do are either kind of simple reflections, um, some more in-depth, kind of deeper, complex reflections where you add or interpret a little bit of information, you present that back to the patient, or the, you know, I keep talking about patient because that's, I'm so used to talking like that. Um, you know, the other person. Um, there are some double-sided reflections, which you know, you're presenting the pros and cons of certain thing, and you, you tie that to get together neatly with an and, and not a but, right? So yes, you're in a tough spot, and you're making efforts to change that, right? Um, and then finally amplified reflections. And then there are some others, and, and these are not clear cut boxes. A lot of times there's sl a slight bit of overlap between the different kind of reflections. All right, so when you do reflective listening, you know, think about, think about these as statements, not questions, right? And you look at the, the figure. When you ask a question, there's usually a slight upturn in the tone of your voice towards the end. How are you doing today, right? Um, when you do a reflection, it's, it's a statement, right? Uh, it's, so you, be careful of that slight upturn in the tone of your voice or the tone of the, the statement towards the end because you can easily make a reflection into a question by having that question in your head, right? So think about this. If you're trying to ask a question, that's how it'll come out. But if you're trying to make a statement, you need to be careful, especially towards the end. The goal of reflective listening is to connect what the other person is thinking to what you're thinking because that establishes true empathy accurate empathy okay the way to do that is if the other person is thinking something they might be saying something and you're hearing that and then you're interpreting that in your head right so there's a lot of feedback in that communication loop right 
And so by doing these reflections, you can test out a hypothesis where you can figure out, okay, is this really what the patient means when they said this, right? And this is a great way of testing it out. Especially when patients are in high emotional states, simple reflections are really easy to do. You, you cannot do a lot of damage when you do simple reflections. Um, and, and that really helps evoke some of that change talk. That helps them keep the conversation going and moving them along, okay? Um, some example, like simple, simple reflections could be paraphrasing or just basically repeating exactly what they said. And complex reflections can, can be a metaphor, can add meaning to what they said, add a feeling like you might be frustrated or you are overwhelmed or something like that, which they may, they may not have said otherwise, or trying to finish a thought. So in the next slide, we will see some examples of um, these reflective lessons. Okay. So let's say a client or the other person says, this has been a really rough week for me. I came that close to using when my ex and I had an argument. I think I'm kind of feeling down, okay? So if you have a level one reflection, which is kind of the most simple ones, right? Kind of think of the simple reflections. These don't add a whole lot to what the person has said. They kind of simply repeat or restate it. You know, you can use some of the same words that the person has said. So for example, for that statement, a level one simple reflection would be, it's been a rough week for you and you're feeling down, right? Now, now notice how I said that statement, right? I said it like a statement. I didn't make it a question. If I were to make it a question, I said, so you, you kind of feeling down? You see that little upturn at the end of my voice, right? You don't want that because it becomes a question then, okay? You want to say reflections like a statement. You can rephrase this, um, you know, so if you use a rephrase, you, you kind of stay very close to the, the information you got from the, the other person, uh, but you can, use, you can use other words and substitute a few words, use a synonym uh, to rephrase it. So in this case, you could say something like, you're feeling pretty discouraged, right? So think about the discouraged, right? They added a, a kind of a, a word to substitute the, the feeling of down. Does it make sense? All right, moving on to the same. So level three is more paraphrasing. So these, this is more moving, moving down into the depths a little bit, right? So now you're really kind of pushing this down, kind of you're starting to interpret a little bit. So same exact statement. But when you paraphrase, you can do it by maybe continuing the paragraph. So the client is saying something and you're just kind of adding information to what the client may say next, right? So one of the examples could be, well, that scared you, how, how close you came to using again. And you're worried you won't get back on track. Now you can see how this information is not what the client said, right? But you're trying to kind of lead by interpreting what the, what the person might say next or what they're worried about, okay? An amplified reflection is kind of, you know, we, we use it, it's a little tricky to use and, you know, someone who's really just learning MI skills, we, we discourage them to use amplified reflections right in the very beginning because it takes a little bit of practice. But again, if you're coming from this stance of genuine warmth and concern for the other person, it comes out beautifully, okay? One of the examples could be for this statement saying, it's been such a hard week for you and that you're completely demoralized. I think about how it feels when someone is in crisis, okay? And think about the reaction to the amplified reflection, right? It would encourage the person to talk more about how they're feeling and that's really the goal, okay? There are some other types of level three reflections in the next slide. Okay, so double-sided is one I mentioned before, right? You kind of, you hit both sides of the ambivalence. You kind of present it in a double-sided fashion. And so you're kind of thinking about, well, this person had a rough week. So maybe the previous weeks hadn't been that rough. So you've been doing really well these past few weeks and this week has been harder right? Not but, but and. So, so when you do a double-sided reflection, I, you know, invariably I'm kind of, you know, present one hand and the next hand kind of do it that way. You can use a metaphor. Um, you know, some people are really good at metaphors. I am horrible at it, so I never use metaphors. But um, 
you know, you can use something like it's it's like the bridge nearly collapsed this week. Okay. And and again, it, it comes out beautifully when you do it right. It just I am not very good at using metaphors in these situations. Okay. And finally, reflections of the feeling. So you can always add a feeling to what that person might be saying. You know, some of the feelings with this client could be, you know, feeling down. That's that's exactly what they said. But then feeling overwhelmed, feeling discouraged, feeling surprised. This really surprised you, okay? So you can add a feeling to test out, is this exactly how the client is feeling? And, and don't worry about if you get it wrong. If you get it wrong, they will correct you, right? And that's the feedback process in MI, okay? So now you saw a few examples of, you saw a client statement and a lot of different ways you can use reflections, okay? So now's the moment of truth. We'll do some more practice. So again, get your cell phones out, okay? In the next slide, you will see a client statement, like the one you saw in the practice. Um, you will see a statement. So read the statement. Um, think about how you, you would reflect it, right? Think about what you would say to this person. Let's say this person is on the phone call with you, right? What would you say next to this person when you're trying to do a reflection, okay? Just type that statement out on your text and then hit send. All right, so here we go. And if the video screen interferes, you can actually minimize your video screen on the right hand side. So get it out of the way. So to the people on the phone call, I'm gonna start reading some of these. Uh, you're feeling like you're in a vicious cycle. Um, your life has been filled only with work and drinking. Um, you feel worse over the past several weeks and feel like you only have been able to work and drink. Sounds like you have been feeling discouraged. Ah, so you guys are, see, see, you get it. You guys are doing amazing, okay? Great, you're working hard and feeling overwhelmed. So what I see a lot is uh, a few of you have done some level one and level two reflections, and some of you have kind of dived down a little deeper and uh, you know, kind of you're adding things to this. Looks like it's been a terrible week and things have been more and more difficult and maybe dangerous. You were doing all right over the last few weeks and have some setbacks, you're feeling trapped. Great, the other thing you might notice is all of you are using a lot of you statements, right? Um, and, and that's great because it's not about you, it's about the other person. And using statements that starts with, so you feel, so you, so I, you know, you believe, those are the kind of statements that come into uh, with reflections. So great, I, I see a lot of good examples here. All right, I'm gonna practice uh, a couple more. So I'm gonna move my slide. So there's another statement and we'll do the same. Give you a little bit more practice, okay?
So it looks like you were frustrated with her. Sounds like you have a lot of tension with her and that is stressful for you. So you feel badly at having snapped at your coworker who's been annoying you. You feel irritable and on edge. You were frustrated and then felt bad about it yourself. Great, great. She kept making excuses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that one, oops, you. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, like the previous example, a lot of you are adding uh, some depth to these reflections. And, and really what I would recommend is when you start doing reflections in the very beginning, start, start it simple uh, because you're, you're just getting to know the person. But, you know, after a few minutes, if you feel like you, you kind of, you've done some simple reflections and you're getting there, you can definitely, you know, change the depth and, and changing the depth of the reflection off and on uh, doesn't make it sound kind of mechanical. Uh, it really feels genuine and, and not awkward when you do that, right? So rough circumstances and you feel like you had something to say. Great, great. Great. Okay, great. Well, let's move on. I have one more example and um, we'll, we'll try to move along a little quickly this time. So as, as you can see, the reflections doesn't have to be complicated. You can literally just repeat back what they've said, right? And that's, that's a great reflection because it, it helps the other person understand you are paying attention to them, you're listening to them, and by repeating back, you're, you're really kind of trying to validate them, okay? I see some great reflections here. You feel misunderstood and unappreciated. You know, some of, some of those, there's, there's a few of those um, and, and really that's, that's kind of diving in deep. Okay, so we'll move on. Thank you all for participating. This is great, okay. All right, okay. So I'm gonna unshare my screen now and have a, a minute or two to kind of get some feedback from you guys on how, how did it feel to, to do that, those reflections? How did it feel to come up with those statements? And would you use that when you have someone on the call? Well, I, I just, I just had a call yesterday and the person was saying exactly some of those things. So it was great to get some more skills about uh, what I could have done and sort of what I did do, but not as eloquently. Right. Thank you for sharing. And, and you see, you see, even for one statement, you saw so many different responses and how there's hundreds of ways to respond to someone like that. Yeah, you've given some structure to some things that I have done before and whatever, but you've given names and structure to that and some new ways. I mean, some ways I haven't done and that's helpful. I really um, like the structure about the level one, two, and three. And I would say, for example, I use level one if an individual is not very forthcoming, they're just kind of make a simple statement and stop, you know, and so I'll just almost repeat what they say and have them pick up the ball and keep going. I'll use level two if I sense that they need rapport and they want to, you know, they, they're checking in, they want to know that I'm with them in order to keep going. And I'll use level three if they're kind of not getting anywhere, they're going around and around, but they need some hints about how to go deeper. So I'll take some guesses about what's going on with them 
and I might even phrase those as questions, even if in your book they're reflections. Right, right. But I really and, like how you've 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 put it in, you know, these these different levels as our different strategies. Perfect. Yes, I work with teenagers with substance abuse and you know conduct disorders, and you know most of the times I get to the shoulder shrug when you ask them a question. So. <laughs> Uh, it, this comes in very, very handy. So thank you all for that feedback. All right, I'm gonna share my screen again and we'll go back to the presentation. Thank you all for the feedback. You, you guys are doing wonderful. I'm, I'm learning from you. Okay, so let's see if I can move this along. Um, okay, so the next skill that we're gonna be talking about are called affirmations. And remember, we were gonna talk about two of these skills. So this is the, the last skill we're gonna be doing, right? Affirmations are clear and genuine words of understanding and appreciation, right? The genuine is really, really important in this. You cannot be sarcastic when doing affirmations. They really help anchor clients to their identity, strengths, and capacities. Even when someone is, just, is in distress, even when they're in the ER with a heroin overdose, right? You can still find something good in them and reflect that back, right? Those are affirmations. We generally avoid the, the using the pronoun I, like I think you should, I believe you, so avoid that. Instead, focus on the you statements again. So if they, in, in that case, they are kind of similar to reflections, right? And, and think about you know, affirmations as kind of attributing interesting or positive qualities to clients, all right? So to do this, you know, we have, I have a list of some affirmations. Of course, there's hundreds of these, right? But this list kind of gives you an idea of some of those potential characteristics, right? Something that you value or something that you feel like the other person values in your conversations, right? Just to give you an idea of what, what these characteristics look like. So we're gonna do a quick exercise on this and use Humans of New York. I think most of you, who, you know, have heard of this. So I'll, I'll give you guys a, a minute or two to read this and then we'll do an exercise related to this. Well, I guess some people are on the phone call, so would it be okay for me to read it because they probably couldn't see the slide? I'm asking the host. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna read it um, so the people on the phone call can hear. Uh, so this is a story from Humans of New York, and this is a project uh, you know, that started the photography thing. They just click random pictures of people on the street or wherever they can find and, and have a brief story attached to that. So if you haven't seen this website, please go check it out. It's amazing. This particular story is about a woman um, who's, who's saying, my mom has nobody to care for, but, uh, for her but me. The last stroke affected her brain so badly. She's like the living dead. All she can do now is breathe. Last month, I found a small wound on her toe. I thought it was something small. It looked so small. So I just put a bandage on it. But it was the beginning of a gangrene. I should have known. It spread and the doctors had to amputate her leg. It's all my fault, but I was under so much pressure. I'm a single mom. I work as a housekeeper. What do I focus on? What do I pay for? My kid's education, food, my mom's care. It's just too much, it's all on me. I called my sister last week and screamed at her. I screamed at her for never calling. I screamed at her for not helping. I told her that I wished she would die and my wish came true. Four days ago, she passed away. When I saw her at the morgue, she had no hair, no eyebrows, nothing. She had been hiding cancer from us. I feel so guilty. My wish came true, but I didn't know because she never called. I haven't eaten since yesterday, only a cup of milk. I can't keep doing this. It's too much pressure. I'm not doing well. I'm not, okay? This is tough. I'm reading it for the millionth time and it still affects me. So what we'll do is bring out your phones again, think about this person and what characteristics, what attributes, what words would you associate with her and, and start typing it and, and then hit send.
right? So I'm seeing a lot of good attributes, caring, caretaker, conscientious, strong, daughter, devoted, weight bearer, compassionate, committed, um, hardworking. Wow, this is an amazing list. So let's say this person was on the call, okay? Think about these characteristics that this person has when you heard her story. And then you're using this genuine affirmation, the genuine characteristics to do an affirmation, saying sim simply, you're a caring person. You're responsible, you're devoted. You take care of things, right? So, so affirmation starts with identifying these characteristics and then using them to reflect it back, give it back to them saying, even though you're struggling right now, look at all the good things that you have, okay? So that's really what an affirmation is, all right? So um, I usually do a, a slight debriefing of the exercise, but instead uh, for the interest of time, I'm gonna move straight into some more affirmations practice. So again, you'll see a statement at the top, okay? Keep your phones handy, read the statement, think about a characteristic that may apply to that person who's making the statement, and then type an affirmation and hit send, okay? So here we go. Independent, great. Mm -hmm. So how would you put that into a statement that you would make to the person? What would you say to them? Exactly, you sound very independent. Mm -hmm. Great, I'm seeing a pattern here, perfect. So I, I think you all get it, right? So, so take this, um, Take, this, take these words, independence, um, individualistic, self-sufficient, uh, independent-minded, courageous, um, and reflect it back to them saying, you know, you're, you're really courageous. You, you want to do, you're an independent person. You like to think for yourself um, and you like to make decisions for yourself. And that is a value you appreciate. You know, it's a statement that's telling this person the, the, the characteristic, the value, the attributes that they might want to hear when they're struggling, determined, autonomous. Great, great. I'm seeing a lot of good affirmations there. Perfect. Okay, let's try one more. Okay, well, we have a couple more, but we, we, I think we have time. We can, we can do a couple more. All right, so I'm gonna move this slide to the next statement now. All right, okay. Caring, kind, you care about other people's feelings. You try to be careful of others. You're conscientious about others' emotions. You're a caring person, yes. And, and, and think about how powerful these statements can be. When you're on that phone call and the other person is, is in a crisis, they're, they're hurting, and, and you're genuinely with warmth saying this, making these statements back to them when, they, when you heard their story. You're sensitive and careful. You like to have empathy for her feelings. Sensitive, compassionate, responsible, caring. Great. Great. Thoughtful, I like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. All right, so we will move on to the third statement, 
um, and try to do affirmations again. And just to pre-warn you, I hope not, but it might be, it, it's a shorter statement. So I, I'll, just, I'll just let you all respond. Mm-hmm. You are being honest. It's hard for you to imagine I can help you. You're discouraged and feel helpless. You're worried I may not be able to help. Sounds like you feel your problems are very big. You're feeling hopeless. You took a chance by calling and that was brave. Great, so, so, so again, great characteristics, brave, uh, courageous, uh, discouraged and feeling helpless. And you know, you're being honest, honesty, realistic. That's great. So we got, we got a lot of good affirmations. I, I, I think you guys are getting it and, and you know, again, Every time I do this, I learn so much from you all too, because there are things that I wouldn't have you know, thought about. And, and, and similarly, it's, it's kind of like a group learning process when we do MI workshop, it always is. Mm -hmm. Skeptical, pessimistic. Great. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna unshare my screen and we're gonna do a little debriefing both on the Humans of New York one and uh, the, the other three statements that you saw for affirmation. So how did, how did you feel in terms of your confidence about coming up with affirmation statements? Yeah, I can say this is. Thank you so much. It's so useful because, particularly on the on the line, we're in this trans situation where often the caller is not he or she is not sure they should call us. Why they calling us? What to expect from us? And on our ends, we don't know anything about the caller except they may be in a dire situation. So, the the way you you describe it as systematic way is really helping to engage because I think it's the very first thing to do. We have no idea. We're both blind in some ways, and it's helping to put some safeguards. So 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 the the course seems safe. Uh, so thank you very much. Yeah, it's very useful. I thought it was great that uh, the last one was negative, like not much to go on, and so I kind of just listened to everyone else because I was going to say, you know, the hopeless and then that's not an affirmation. So I appreciate other people. You can always say, wow, you were brave to call the helpline. That's a good one. I feel like uh, um, so much of the time people go through life feeling unappreciated. So we can reflect something that is affirming uh, it really helps that small, subtle switch in uh, how they're feeling. Um, so I, that's useful. And I realize I, sh I have to do that more. It's part of saying you're doing the best you can with what you have and recognizing that. Right. And, and you can see how how having that foundation of the MI spirit and then kind of adding these skills on top, even if, even though these, these couple of skills, they're not really hard to do. It takes a little bit of practice sometimes, but it can really create this hope, right? And, and, and that's really the whole point of these phone calls, I, I would think, is to create hope in a situation where there seems none. Um, and, and by systematically kind of thinking through this and breaking it down into characteristics and attributes, you know, you, you guys, are, you know, have done a wonderful job just kind of sharing uh, different different styles of how you could do this, even with, with a statement that is negative, right? If someone's, you know, ambivalent about the phone call, they're not really sure why they're calling, 
it could still create, you know, e even saying something like, you're being honest, you're being realistic, helps validate them, right? And, and I think that's, that's always a, a good um, skill to have. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen again, and we are getting very close to the end of our presentation. So, oh, yes. okay, so, so the last part is, is more of the real world practice. Um, and, and this is what we were trying to kind of problem solve on how we would do this because it's this, a, a bunch of uh, you here. And ideally we could, we could have used the breakout rooms to break you up into like you know, two or three people and kind of do it together. Uh, but since we don't have that, you know, maybe, maybe we can test it out. You, know, you have been on those calls. Uh, I would say think of a statement or two that you may have struggled with on the phone calls. Um, and you can either kind of just come to the, you know, unmute yourself and, and talk about that statement or post it on the chat button. So you have a chat function. You can post it on the chat. And I'm going to try to see if I can monitor that chat. Oh, well, there's a lot of chat, so I may not be able to monitor that. Maybe my hosts and uh, co-hosts can help me out. Um, but um, let's, let's, let's bring out a few statements and then let us see if I can or someone else on the call can come and respond to uh, you know, so, some strategies on, on what, how to best respond. And you know, we all, there's no right or wrong answer. We may all have different strategies to do that. So this is more of the real world practice, okay? So I'm gonna mute myself for a second and let you all think about the phone calls and if there was, there was you know, situations that you struggled with. So feel free to put it in the chat or just unmute yourself and talk. So Bernadette just posted one in the chat, um, but I think we've all probably heard it from callers. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Um, it's, I don't even know why I'm calling you. Right, thank you Bernadette for that. Uh, that's, that's, yes, that's a, that's a great example, you know. Um, how, I'm guessing this happens uh, at least a few times, if not a whole lot. Um, and you know, I always, I always think about you know, for some reason, doing constant liaison psychiatry comes to my mind when I hear that uh, statement or question. Because a lot of times when I'm talking to the other team, they don't really know why they're calling me. They're in some sort of crisis, right? And and my role changes to well, for now, my my goal is to figure out what I can do to help clarify that situation, right? And, and reflecting that, saying something like, you know, you seem, seem like, you know, there's a little bit of confusion about why you called or, or it seems like you're struggling with what really I can help you with. And, you know, just kind of acknowledging that we're trying to figure this out together helps with that partnership and rapport building, right? And, and that's the starting point. So thank you. Thank you for, for talking, uh, bringing that up again. I might just add another suggestion, which is, if I heard that, I think I would say, well, why not, let's just slow down and take a breath, and maybe the reason will come to you. And then I would just wait and let them mm -hmm. see what arises. Yeah, yeah, that's a great suggestion. Something I, I bring up on this also, it, it's a, a very new situation for, for these physicians who are very active and in general, I the one who help and it's not easy at all to conceive mm -hmm. how they can be helped. Yeah, and again, remember affirmations. You know, these are physicians calling you and they're not used to calling counselors, right? So you can always say something like, well, I, I appreciate how, how much courage it may have taken you to, to pick up the phone and call. Right, even if you don't exactly know why you have called, and and that is so extremely validating. Okay. Any others? I know I'm going a little over the the time limit. I hope that's okay. I don't. I'm not going to keep you very long. I, I think we are almost towards the end. Need we 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 can go up to twelve thirty. Uh, I mean one thirty. Okay. Uh, if uh, there are lots of questions and answers. Sure, and then we'll have time for more questions and answers. Um, you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely here. Yeah, All right. So, ben, did you have something? Oh, I was just trying to read uh, the, you know, some of our questions. Uh, I think that possibly 
uh, is, uh, you know, from the from the phone call, uh, they mentioned about, uh, quote, no one has ever helped me in the past. Um, I'm not sure it's the answer for the previous you know, scenario or is actually the, the one from the, you know, from the phone call and the, in the actual phone call you received. But uh, nevertheless, I think, uh, you know, you're right, uh, a lot of, you know, colleagues calling us, uh, they're not used to, you know, call us to ask for help. You know, they're fr feeling frustrated and they indeed, uh, you know, encounter a lot of issues, uh, um, uh, including that, uh, you know, one time I, I was receiving a phone call from a colleague and talking about um, because of the, you know, uh, decrease of patient volume uh, and, uh, you know, that, that is a low conductor and uh, that, that significantly, you know, uh, uh, cause a decrease of income, you know, she's worried about uh, her future. So, you know, so for this, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, motivational interview, it's important uh, to, um, you know, like a uh, validation, you know, uh, to uh, an affirmation that uh, she has uh, the courage to call us and also she has been doing relatively well before this pandemic uh, coming up and, uh, you know, and try to explain to her this is uh, a temporary setback in a sense and, uh, you know, just keep up the hope for the future. You know, I think that's, you know, important for us and, and uh, it is uh, very powerful that, um, you know, just saying this uh, short encounter about 10, 15 minutes and be able to, you know, help uh, help our colleague to regain the hope, you know, I think it's important. Yes, thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Ben. Nia, do you want me to go ahead and say the other uh, um, statements that are coming up in the chat? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's have bring it one at a time, so we can, you know, maybe sure. maybe a few. Not, uh, I don't know how many are there, but we can yeah. definitely have. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. pick up some. So there sure. is one, uh, maybe from an angry caller. You're not in my shoes, so you don't understand what I say. Mm -hmm. That's a great statement, right? You're not in my shoes. How how would you respond to that, or what do you say? Please feel free to unmute yourself and have like a chat. I would just I'm, say you're right. So tell me more. Yeah. Yes, perfect. And that's a perfect example of another motivational interviewing skill that we didn't practice today. Open-ended questions, right? Tell me more. That's perfect. So another one is, um, my husband just doesn't get how hard I work. Mm -hmm. So that's, that sounds similar to the, the daughter. The, my daughter doesn't appreciate. So my husband just doesn't get how hard I work, right? You feel underappreciated. Um, you, you are frustrated because um, you, know, you work so hard and you don't get the response that you feel you deserve at home. Again, you, you, can, you can think of any statements like that. And any other suggestions, comments on that statement? I think uh, uh, here, uh, Dr. Bonnie uh, Steinberg uh, had an interesting concern. You know, uh, she mentioned about uh, you know the concern is that the affirmation can feel invalidating of the caller's pain or discomfort. So how do you balance that? You are muted. Yeah. Sorry, I missed that part. Can you say that again, Ben? Yeah, uh, the concern is that uh, the affirmation can feel invalidating of the caller's pain and the discomfort. So how do we balance that? Right, and, and that's why I said, you know, when you do affirmations, you have to be a little more careful because it's, it's, tr it's slightly tricky, right? And that's why we build skills like affirmation on the foundation of the MI spirit, right? If, you're, if you have developed that, if you're, you're in that mode and you have communicated that by doing some, maybe some simple reflections to begin with, just to kind of understand the story, when you start doing affirmations, it will probably not feel invalidated. Uh, now, if it does, hopefully the other person will let you know so you can correct itself. The whole process of MI is feedback based. Every time you say something, 
you get a feedback from the other person about it and you can self-correct in the moment. And that's what we do every single time. So your, your patients, your colleagues when you, with, with whom you're doing MI actually is teaching you in the moment every single time as you're going along. So, so that's what I would suggest is, you know, if it does feel invalidated, it is okay to apologize saying something like, oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize it, it felt like that, that was not my intention. Um, um, tell, me, tell me what you meant by that. And then kind of just moving on to open-ended questions or doing some more simple reflections after that to self-correct the, the intent um, and reestablish that rapport. And that can re work really well. And, and I think I have a comment on that because, I, because we are focusing on uh, reflections and affirmations, it feels like, oh, is that what we have to do? Um, but as, as if we are hyper-focusing on those two skills, whereas a, a, personally for me, I do a lot of open-ended questions and I'm sure most of colleagues do a lot of open-ended questions and reflections. And affirmations are not something that probably we do as much as our uh, therapist uh, co-workers might be doing. And so um, just to remind everybody, we are focusing on those two skills where just, just like Nihit said, uh, we could definitely use our own judgment and use open-ended questions too. Yes, thank you for that comment. It's extremely helpful to kind of clarify that. So I am in no way proposing that MI is a solution for life's problems, right? I mean, in, in certain situations, MI might not work. Uh, you have to change strategies. You know, I, I think of all of these as tools in my tool belt. Uh, and, and you're the decision maker. You decide when to pull out CBT or DBT or supportive therapy or MI or, you know, medications. These are all tools that you have. Um, you know, you're all competent physicians and you can decide when to bring out a certain tool. And, and of course, you know, coming more specific to MI, there's a lot more to MI than, than just what we talked about in the past hour. Um, and so, you know, I mean, when we do trainings, it's, it's usually a two day workshop. Um, so there's a lot more to that that I can do in, in an hour session. And the, really the reason I focused on those two was it felt like if you even got 20% of what we did here today, uh, I think that would help enhance what you're already doing with your patients. And also give you some idea of, you know, from other people who are doing this to, well, these are some other ways of doing the same thing um, in, in slightly different situations. So thank you so much for that comment. So there is a question in the chat um, from Julie. She says, can you say a little about information exchange? Mm -hmm. Yes. So information exchange, so I'm, I'm trying to think of a scenario, right? Let's say a person, uh, a patient of yours or a colleague of yours is worried about gaining too much weight, weight because they are, um, you know, they've been working long hours, they're not having a good sleep schedule, they've been eating junk food a lot more, right? And they're really kind of worrying about their, their weight and their health, and that's why they're calling. So just, I'm, I'm making this up, okay? Uh, so in that case, you could give them information about you know, diet modification, exercise, you know, whatever you, you feel like is a treatment. But the way you do that, the way you provide that information to be consistent with the MI spirit, is you ask first for permission, okay? You ask permission to exchange that information with the, 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 the person. So you say, well, I, I hear that you're really kind of concerned about your weight. Uh, would it be okay if we can talk a little bit more about what some of the strategies have worked for other people, you know, for, to give an example. So that way is you're coming, you're providing them information, but you're coming at it from a very MI adherent kind of place where you're saying, I'm asking you for permission for me to share my expertise with you. And that's really in a sense what information exchange is. Okay, I think we uh, cover most of the questions. Uh, so, and uh, anyone has additional questions, uh, you can just mute yourself and uh, and uh, you know bring the question. So um, while you guys are doing that, I'm gonna have a couple of more slides. Bear with me while you're thinking about questions. Um, let me move this really quickly. Let me get to the end of this, and then we can have more questions. Hold on. Let me. Oh, okay. 
some acknowledgements. I, I am involved with a motivation interviewing work group that have these other physicians across the country. And, um, you know, every year we try to do a motivational interviewing workshop at uh, ACAF, which is the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. But we are also kind of thinking ahead of how to, how to involve our trainees, our child psychiatry trainees in particular, um, and get them all trained in motivational interviewing during their training. So I'm, I'm a part of this workshop and a lot of the, the information that I gave you, some of the, the, the slides are kind of shared between all of us and we use it for different workshops. So I really wanna acknowledge them and thank them for this work. Um, and then um, I would, you know, we can move on to questions of course. I have a, you know, I'd really appreciate your feedback for the session today. So I would, I'm gonna try to, well, oops, sorry. I'm gonna try to um, post this link in the chat and um, let's see if I can do that. And I would really appreciate if you guys can click on the link. Ooh. Um, I can do it, I can do it, Nahit. Oh, perfect, can you, can you do it? Yeah. Yeah, just post the link on the chat and um, all you guys have to do, it'll take a minute for you to do. So if you click on the link, it'll open up a feedback form. You can you know, give me all the negative feedback you want. I'd can you show the that. link again so I can see it? Okay. Oh, you want me to share the screen or post it in share chat? Share the screen just so I can see the link. Oh, I think I may have already, hold on. Let me see if I can go to the chat. Oh, perfect. Okay. All right. I think I just sent it. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Perfect. perfect. Yes, yeah, so if you click on that link, it'll take you to the form and you can fill out the form. But yes, um, that's, that's the end of my presentation. So thank you all for hanging out here. I really, really appreciate spending your Saturday morning, afternoon with me, depending on your, on your time zone. And I'm, I'm still available for questions. I just wanna thank you again for, for taking the time to do this. This has been extremely helpful. Um, or I, I mean, I think every single one of us has taken a call where these skills would, would be very useful. So this has been really great. And as always, you were excellent at teaching in my, I remember very fondly from my training. Um, who has well, questions? I appreciate the kind. <clears throat> I definitely, I agree. You know, and it's very, you know, not only the courses, the uh, lecture is very informative, but uh, the, you know, this uh, method is kind of unique. I think, uh, you know, we all learn a lot. It's more interactive. It's, you know, it's a very great, uh, you know, experience for all of us. Yeah. And for our audience, uh, just, uh, you know, if you can click the link and, uh, you know, uh, get an evaluation uh, so that uh, Dr. Puma can have some feedback regarding this uh, lecture. Thanks a lot. Yes, part of the reason for the feedback is my own selfish interest. Uh, you know, with all of the conferences being canceled, I think ACAP might also move to a completely virtual platform. And mm -hmm. we have a, you know, we were trying to figure out different ways to do this workshop virtually. Uh, so I was telling Ben before we started that this is kind of a trial run of the virtual one, uh, just to kind of see how it works. Um, so, so the feedbacks would be really helpful. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Personally, I think it went very well. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and Neet, you said we can give you all the negative feedback, and then you would <laughs> give us affirmation saying, "Oh, you guys like." Well, to we need to give uh, we need to give affirmation first. No, no, that's what he, he like. He'll give us affirmation saying you like to be honest. Right, exactly. <laughs> Looking there. Yeah, already told you guys that. <laughs> you guys are c amazing, competent physicians, so you can evaluate me all you want. It was really great, Nihit. I was just uh, talking to Allison that uh, uh, maybe we would do a workshop for our own volunteers and invite you. Um, but this is all off, off, uh, offline talk. <laughs> sure. All right. Questions, guys. Hey. Please unmute yourselves and ask questions. Yeah. Or if you have comments, you can unmute and comment. It always feels good to hear a voice versus read a chat. Thanks a lot. You know. So again, please uh, click the link and uh, you know, give the feedback and to this lecture. So I think it will be 
you know, uh, important to Dr. Kumar to have a uh, have a clear, you know, understanding of uh, how this, uh, you know, new method works. You know, again, I personally I think that's very, you know, very, you know, it's a very successful lecture. We uh, really appreciate that. I think your lecture was so thorough that all the questions are answered. Oh, that's great. I'm gonna go home to my, uh, to my child. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that it? No questions. Yeah. And no further questions. Well, I appreciate okay. you guys coordinating this. And again, thank you so much for doing this for all of the physicians out there. It's, it's such a helpful, service. So I, I, I really appreciate what you guys are doing. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot for, you know, spending time with us, uh, you know, in, in your weekend. Uh, really appreciate it. All right. All right. All right. Bye. 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 Take care then.